Welcome! In this video we will cover some errors I uncovered after the last video in the PowerBasic console compiler application we used to generate bulk data. And we will also create our first graphics window in a console application. In the last video we covered a program called Generate Data. This program took a series of comma separated variable files and used them via a random number generation routine to actually generate random data for the programs we're going to be using later. One of the things we forgot to do in the last application was to seed the random number generator. Now, in the routine which actually calls the function, the generate file routine, what we need to do before we actually start calling is to seed the random number generator. Now, when you use the randomize command, it has one single parameter. Now, if you give it a number, it means that the sequence of random numbers that you get will be the same each time. So if you seed it with a number one, each time you run the program, you will get a series of pseudo-random numbers, but they will always be in the same sequence. If you use the timer function, it will return the time in milliseconds that the clock on the machine is actually sitting at, and therefore every time you run the program, the random number generator will be seeded with a different number. So if we actually run the program now, it will still run quite successfully, build the arrays, and then step through until it gets to the last. So the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to point out that when we actually built up the arrays, one of the problems we had was we picked a names file which was only boys names. Now this is not ideal, so what I've done, I've got a file that has both male and female names in it, and if we substitute this, we will get more accurate data with both male and female, female names in it. So, this video is now going to cover the creation of a graphics window. Now, when we run this application, as you've seen, it will run quite happily, display a console window, and then display text of the console window to see what it's doing. This works fine, and most of the console applications wouldn't be expected to have anybody watching them. But in the event that you do actually have somebody watching them, you may not want to actually show a console. You may want to show something a little less obtrusive. Now, what we can do in that is we can effectively turn the console off by using the console off command. Now, we won't do that for the moment. We'll comment that one out because if we run it for the moment, there will be absolutely no display on screen. What we want to do is we want to replace the display on screen with something new. So, in order to do that, we will need a handle for this new window. I know it's not a windowing application, but it does actually handle windows. So what we've done is we've created a D word, which is a double word, to store the handle of the console with the graphics window we're about to actually create. Now, as well as doing that, we want to make our program a little more flexible. At the moment, it runs from 1 to 1,000. So basically, every time you run it, it will be 1,000 iterations. Now, if we want to change this easily, without having to know when the program actually is, we're going to put it in as a constant. Um, we're going to declare that constant up at the top with our other constants. There we go. 1,000 records. Now, for the creation of our console window, what we want to do here is we want to go down to our main program here. This is where we're setting the console that exists at the moment. And what we're going to do is these three commands here are going to effectively be redundant because we're not going to have a console on display. What we're going to have instead is a graphics window. Now this is the first time we've covered graphics windows, so we're going to create a function to 
create the graphics window. And in this function will be all the information we actually need to create it. Now the other thing we'll want to do is we will want to set a font within the graphics window. And to do that, we want to create a, or we want to reference a new font. Now this can be any font you like, but in this case we're picking Courier New. Uh, we want it to be 18 point. Now there are a number of other parameters you can actually have with fonts, which you can find out from the help file. Inside here, font new gives you the font name, which we've given it. We've given it the point size. The style is normal, bold, italic, underline, whatever. So we'll just pick normal. So we'll go for a zero. Uh, the character set after that can either be ANSI or the default one or any of the other types of character sets that Windows supports. I think we'll go for the uh, the default one. Um, the pitch, again, is depending how you want to actually set the font on screen. Again, we'll probably just go with the default. And the final parameter is escapement which is basically angle in tens of degrees. Again, we'll go for zero here because we just want ordinary text. So if we put those parameters in, and we want to put this to the constant we created a moment ago, this will basically reference this font and put the values to that constant which we haven't actually created yet. So we'll create that as well. This is so you can convert to anywhere else in the program. Right, so we get two new globals. One for the handle of the graphics window, one for the font that the graphics window is actually going to be using. Now, we haven't actually built our function yet, so that's our next task. To create a new function to build our graphics window. Now the purpose of this function is obviously to set everything up that we actually need for the graphics window. Now we don't need to do a great deal for this. Obviously we'll want to put some text on the screen just as I did with the console window. So let's create a variable to handle the text. And we'll put our text just as something fairly generic. Now, this is where we want to actually create the graphics window. So there are a large number of commands you can actually do with a graphics window. But basically, you say graphics window to create the window. You give it the text you want on the title bar of the graphics window. You give it the X and Y coordinates of where you want the graphics window to start. And then the width and height of the graphics window. We'll just go some fairly small numbers for the moment. Right, okay, so that will in effect create the graphics window. We haven't put anything in it yet, and we haven't referenced it. So we need to attach the graphics window. And in here, we'll have a quick look at the graphics commands. Graphics attach. Um, this attaches it, and it also has an optional parameter of redraw. Now, the redraw allows you to set it up so that you don't necessarily have to refresh the graphics window all the time. Now, this can speed up the rate at which you can actually draw graphics windows. So you can basically pause updating to the window, do lots of updates, and then basically turn the redraw back on again. But what we're going to do here is just the basics. We're just going to attach it and let it redraw it, because we're not going to bring too much work on this particular graphics window. And the last parameter at the moment is always zero. So having done that, uh, we can then set the font, which is the one we created earlier. 
with the variable. Now, having done that, um, what we want on this graphics window, we want to have some text to see what it's actually doing, and I'd like to have a progress bar so we can give to the user some indication that the program is actually running. So, we can do a box on the screen, and in here we can specify the coordinates. Obviously, you don't want to go outside the graphics window you were, you were originally drawn. Let's try these. Now we can put some colours in. And let's go for... Yes, yes. Right, let's try that. Now the graphics box command, if we have a look at the help on that one. Upper left corner of the box, lower right corner of the box, which is specified. The 20 we put in is the percentage of roundness of the corners. Again, so you don't have to draw a box, it's got right angle corners. Um, the colour of the box edge, which we put in. And the optional fill colour. And then the fill style. So what we've put in, there we go, we're going for default, which is a solid fill. So basically the number we're going to do for the fill color is going to be basically red when we actually draw a line. So if we actually run this now, uh, it would run through quite happily. Um, it would. We haven't turned the console off yet, so let's try a quick compile to make sure we've not done anything wrong. And yes we have. Oh, we didn't put an as. Yep, it quite correctly noticed that the function did have any return value. Right, and we're running. Now there's a graphics window on screen. Now it's not actually doing anything. All the work's happening behind it. But our graphics window is displayed. On the screen says generating data at the top. The window's completely white at the moment, but our box has been drawn at the bottom. So what we need to do is populate some text into the box and also draw the progress bar as it actually proceeds. When the application finishes, the graphics window automatically closes. So now we've got a graphics window in place, we can then go back to when we actually generate the file. Now, in here, we have at the moment uh, each of these calls which actually builds the arrays. Now, what we can actually do with that is in the build array function, which is in our random routines, we have a console command. Now we're going to be turning off the console, so it's going to be kind of pointless. So if we have a look in there, what we want to do is we want to actually replace that line with another. Now to make it easy, we'll create a refunction to do this, which is going to set the progress text. And we'll call it just as we did before, building array, and then we'll add on the str type. There we go. Now there aren't any other console outputs into this function, so that's fine. So we want to create this new function. And we'll put this one down at the bottom. And this function is going to create the text in our graphics box. So how do we actually do that? Well, set the progress text. Now we want a variable to actually set whether it's actually going to be drawn. Now normally you would set your variable up as this, a local variable which effectively every time the function gets called it gets reinitialized and then you can populate it. Now what I want to do here is something a little different. You can use a static keyword. 
Now when you use the static keyword, when the first time you actually come into this function, this variable which is a long would be zero. If you set the value of that variable, and then the next time you come into the function, it will retain the value I had the last time it called the function. So the variable is persistent, which can be very useful. Because what we're going to do here we're going to keep its value and we're going to add a bit more and this is going to actually use we're going to use this to drive the um, y coordinate of the text on the graphics window and we're going to set the position graphics singular set position and we're going to go the x coordinate first and the y coordinate which will be the one which is dynamic and then we're going to print to that location the text we've actually brought into the to the uh, function, and we'll add on to the end of that. Yeah, we'll add on into that some spaces, just in case we want to reuse an overwrite, just enough so that it's long enough that so it always gets overwritten. Right, okay. So if we run that now, what we should see. There we go. It's printing out what way it's actually building. I mean, first name, surname, street, cities, eye colors, and bud group. Now the rest of the uh, activity is still going on in the background. So we're halfway there. So what's the next thing to do? Well, in our generate file once we've built the arrays which we've handled quite nicely we have this for next loop now what we were doing before was we had the construct in here where we were every 200 rows we were printing something out to the console now we don't want to do that so we're going to take this bit out completely and we're going to replace this with something that actually draws the progress bar so, how do we do that? Well, we get another wee function. I'm going to create a function called set progress bar, and we're going to pass it a parameter, which is the row it happens to be reading. Which, if this max record is 2000, it will be somewhere between 1 and 2000, and we'll set the progress bar accordingly. So, let's create the new function. Now, one thing you have to be careful to do in a for next loop is not make any change to the long r variable inside the function. Because since it's passed by reference and it's a for next loop in the calling routine, if you make a change to it here, you'll be changing it in the calling routine as well. Always one to watch out for. So, what we want to do then is set the progress bar. So what we want is a variable that is independent of long r. So create a local variable called long value. Now, we want a test on this just to make sure it's not bigger than the maximum. It should never ever be, but let's do it anyway. It's always good to put validation into your code. So that if it is actually if it, if, it, if it is actually bigger than the maximum number of records, then we will make the long value equal to the maximum. So it can never exceed it. Otherwise it will quite happily take the value it's given. So that stops anything at all breaking our limit. Now we want to work out the percentage. So we can actually display this progress bar between 0% and 100%. So we'll create a variable and it's going to hold that value. And 
And the calculation is quite simply going to be... Let's just paste this in so I don't do a typo on it. Standard calculation for percentage. Now, what we want to do is to work out where on the screen we're actually going to be. So there's a couple of extra variables we're going to need here. We use a long start to work out where we're actually starting on the console window itself. We knew that the box was driven from position 15, so we'll go for slightly inside that. We'll say 17. And we also want to have a variable to keep track of the top value. And this is the Y coordinate on the screen. And we'll say that's 500. And we've already got the percentage once done. OK. Right. OK. So to work out where we are on the screen, we want to make that equal to the top value multiplied by the percentage. Oh, no, get ahead of myself here. Get myself here. Now we'll do an integer division. If you use the slash the other way, it divides it, but doesn't give you any um, decimal point. Which is quite useful, because what we want here is a whole number. So what we're doing here, we're going to get into with a number, which is going to be a pixel count plus adding on to the long start, which is perfect. Now we want to do, we want to do our, a box inside the box we've already drawn, which is basically our progress bar. So again, it's a graphics box command, box command, and in this case, we want the long start, which we've just calculated, 442, which is our position on screen, how far the percentage has actually got, down to almost the bottom of the other box. Now. We'll set the the background's fairly academic in this one, so we'll just make it black. But we want to go for red as being our choice of colour for the progress bar. And what we'll also do about three hundred I think. Um, and we will print onto the screen. An additional bit of text to show what record we're actually reading. There we go, so that should put the word record followed by the number. And since we know what our maximum is, we can put of The maximum of records, so it will be 1 of 2,000, 2 of 2,000, and so on. So if we do that, if we run it now, assuming we haven't made any syntactical errors, which of course we have, which one is it warning about? Oh, oh, I've already dimensioned it. And what's it warning about now? What have I missed? I've missed a bracket somewhere. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Bracket should be there. Missed a the bracket. Right, there we go. We now have a progress bar, which is quite happily moving from left to right, indicating how far down it's got. So, in summary, what we've done so far then, we've created a graphics window, we've put text to it to see which array we're actually building. Uh, we're giving a record number to see how far we've got, uh, which is all good. Um, so 
This one runs qu fairly quickly because it's only doing a thousand records, but you could be running it for many, many more than a thousand. So you may want to know how long it's actually run for. Plus, we want to get rid of this console window. So what we'll do is we'll go back up to the top and we'll use console off. Now, that would stop the console running, but since the console isn't there, there's no way of taking input from it on the keyboard. So what we want to do is basically close off the window fairly promptly after that. So there's a number of ways of actually doing this. So what we'll do is let's go back to our main function where we actually called it. Now in here we have some console outputs uh, which we'll want to get rid of because we're not going to console anymore. So we'll put in the call to our function. There we go. Uh, just on the off chance that it errors. And rather than this one down here saying any key to exit, we'll take these two lines out and we'll put a little message on screen. Something along the lines of it auto we'll make it actually auto exit in ten seconds. Just be using the sleep command we've used before, which is expressed in milliseconds, so we need to go for ten thousand. So if we run this now, it will run quite happily. It will display everything to the console, everything to the graphics window. There will be no console window and it will exit in ten seconds. So we try running that. There we go. There is no console window. There is a graphics window. It will run quite happily and in 10 seconds it will disappear. So we'll wait the 10 seconds. Now if we were running a large number of records, it could take a long time to actually generate them. There you go. It's disappeared after 10 seconds. So what we want to do is we want to put something additional in place. We want something that will actually work out how long it takes to actually run the program. So I'm going to create another global, in this case another D word, and we'll call this start, and rather than a D word now we'll call it a double, we'll go for a double, double variable. And this is going to be a start time. Okay, so when the program actually starts to generate, down here in our generate, in our generate file, what we will do in here before we actually do anything is we will use our timer again. up the start time, which is good. And then once we've finished, we want to end it and figure out the difference between the two. So further down here, after we've done all the gubbins, after we've been down through the four next loop at the very end, we will want to, let's create a couple of new variables, called time now, and and what we're going to do now is time now we're going to pick up the timer to pick up the time now so that will give us a difference between the two now all we have to do is display it. Now since we've already got a function that puts things out, we will quite happily steal that. Uh, which is our fun set progress text. It was, wasn't it? Yes. And we'll say the duration equals and since these are numbers. Uh, 
and just enough chance. One of the things you can do with the format command, which we haven't done so far, is that you can actually format numbers in nice, easy ways of looking. So if we put that format command in, that will basically give us a comma. So we can express thousands or millions if it takes that long. I doubt it will, but let's try it anyway. And then we'll print seconds. So if we run that now, let's try that. There we go. It's running away quite happily. Gets to the end. Boom. Six seconds. Perfect. So it tells us how long it took to run it. So in six seconds we generated a thousand records. So I think that completes our video of today. Thank you for watching.